Everything you see, know, and understand exists, at least to you, inside of your mind. But most of it you learned from the outside. For example, an apple. When you talk about an apple, you might be talking about how it looks. And when you're talking about how it looks, you're really talking about the rays of light that hit your eyes when you looked at it. Whether it's immediately, while you're looking, or later on when you're remembering. Similarly, when you learn a fact like that adult elephants can't jump, you might have the idea of an adult elephant trying and failing to jump in your head, but how it got there is by my voice, or from a book. If you read it, you got it from a sequence of symbols, say of English letters. And no matter how we got that knowledge, the symbols that represent it, their light or letters or sound, aren't it. The light that came from the apple isn't the same thing as the apple, or the image we have of it inside of our heads. The fact that adult elephants can't jump isn't the same thing as the letters or words I use to communicate that fact to you. We can call all those symbols that you take in from the outside information. When that information is used to describe a thing or an idea, we call it a description of that thing or idea. And so we make this fundamental distinction between a thing and its description. And in the spirit of mathematics, in the study of such abstractions, we try to make this idea a little more precise. So, how might we define a description? How about as a string of symbols that when read by someone or something that understands it, is converted to or connected to the thing it stands for? And a thing can have multiple descriptions. Because our definition of a description is based on the existence of someone who understands it, who understands the string of symbols that make it up, we can consider a description in an obscure language, as long as at least someone knows it. In fact, we can broaden our scope even more, and say we can have descriptions in any language, whether anyone knows it or not, so long as someone can learn it. And we can go a step further, extending from just humans who can take descriptions to things, to any sorts of machine, biological, mechanical, or digital, that can take input descriptions and output the things that are being described. The conversion from the description to the thing is called computation. For example, digital computers like the one you're using right now take descriptions called programs and convert them to things like sounds, images, texts, and even 3D models. They compute things from descriptions from the programs, just like our brains take descriptions to things. But while we don't know exactly how our brains represent the descriptions of things, we know computers understand them as binary sequences of ones and zeros. Consider this, that 2 to the power of 22 is a description of 4,194,304 in the language of arithmetic. While human computers once had to do computations like this themselves, by hand, Computers, digital computers, now do it automatically. Here, they can connect descriptions to things just as well as humans. And we consider any sort of machine that can too. So, given some thing, for every possible description of it that any machine might accept, we wonder if there's a sort of normal description for it, one that we choose over all the others. And we can do this by trying to find the smallest possible description that can be computed to the thing by some machine. We get this smallest description by considering all machines together with the shortest description for our thing each one accepts. Then, describing each machine itself as a string of symbols, we choose the shortest description of thing plus description of machine combination we can find. Then, we use that combination itself as our description of the thing, and we feed it into something called a universal machine that takes our smallest machine plus description combination for anything, separates the description of the thing from the description of its machine, and then runs the machine on the description of the thing, and outputs its computation, what the machine converted its description to, the thing. 
This universal description method we just discussed is optimal in the sense that it has the shortest total description for everything, and we distinguish those descriptions from all the others. And this fact is outrageously profound. It's the smallest possible description of something anyone who knows any language can use to describe it, from humans, aliens, computers, to anything else we might be able to think of. Lots of things have short descriptions, like 2 to the 22 as we described earlier, is much shorter than the actual number it stands for. A big computer animation made up of thousands of rectangles of thousands of pixels might have a much shorter description as a few lines of code. So while things often have short descriptions, what we talked about is the smallest possible short description. It's the raw, minimal sort of fundamental representation of that thing we can have. We call the size or length of the smallest description its Kolmogorov complexity, or K. K defines a measure of intrinsic complexity, an essential property of any string, of how much information it really contains. A string like FJBOZNI is shorter than cat 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 cat, but it actually looks a little more complex. FJBOZNI has more information packed into it than the string of five cats, and so it makes sense that its Kolmogorov complexity should be higher. And we can see that the sequence of cats has a much smaller k than its length. We could describe it as five times cat, or five times cat, and easily conceive of a person or computer that understands it as write cat five times and 5 times C-A-T is significantly shorter than cat 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 cat. Can we think of a way to crunch down the more complex string, F-J-B-O-Z-N-I, to compress it so that it has a shorter description? Not really, because there aren't really any patterns in it, like repetitions of symbols and sequences, that we can use in a description. Imagine a canvas with a bunch of dots of differing colors placed erratically around the white. You might not be able to find any patterns in it. It'll look like there's no short way to describe it. You'd almost say it's random. In fact, in terms of Kolmogorov complexity, that's how we define randomness. Algorithmic randomness. Some string, some sequence of symbols is algorithmically random, essentially, if there's no description of it shorter than itself. To describe the sequence of dots to someone, we'd have to actually show them the drawing. The shortest description of that sequence, FJBOZNI, might just be itself. Given this new definition of randomness, we find that some sequences of symbols that we usually describe as random, like 3.14159, pi, aren't so random. While pi has an infinite number of symbols, there's actually a relatively small description for it. A computer program, a list of instructions only a few lines long that a computer will read and go on to output up to arbitrary digits of pi. So while pi itself is an infinite sequence, we have a much shorter description for it. And so it doesn't satisfy our definition of randomness, and that makes sense. If we can get something by some sensible determined procedure, built around patterns and regularities in that thing, it doesn't really fit our intuition of what should be random. In fact, many numbers and other sequences which we usually think of as random actually aren't under our definition of Kolmogorov complexity. So through this idea of Kolmogorov complexity, we've defined a fundamental measure of how complex something is, how much information is in it, and how random, regular, or patternless it is. With application to every walk from biology, chemistry, physics, and anything describable, and even to artificial intelligence and machine learning in measuring patterns and data and information, it is truly pretty damn profound. It is truly pretty damn profound.